So um, I'm going to try to focus on just three ideas here. Um, they, all re they all relate to the current economic crisis, and they all relate to the fact that real estate was an important part of the crisis. Uh, and my belief is that we need a lot of uh, what engineers call human factors engineering to fix the crisis. So uh, I'm going to be talking about ideas in my book. But I actually have about 20 ideas in this book, <laughs> so I'm going to focus in on just three. Uh, but um, again, the, uh, what I believe in is that we have to apply financial theory, but we have to apply it more broadly to prevent crises like the one we have. We have to apply it to real estate. <laughs> this is a picture of world real estate. Uh, the way I get it is just a picture of the world by night, and there's lights on real estate. So the combined value is in the U.S., Europe, Asia, Indian subcontinent and, uh, continent and elsewhere. The combined value of this might have been something like $100 trillion at the peak but we've lost, we're losing it, and this is a huge risk. This is my, uh, incidentally, I admire the environmental um, performance index because I'm an index builder. This is my home price index for the United States from 1890 to the present in real terms, and you can see the incredible boom we've had recently. This is the root cause of the crisis. Uh, I wanted to just show that it's international and goes back a long time, the volatility of real estate prices. This is the hair... Heerenracht region of Amsterdam in 1685, and you've been there, right, some of you. It looks just like that today. So Professor Piet Eichholz at Maastricht University got the data for all the sales since 1628, and he compri made an index, uh, and since these houses didn't change, this is the home price index that he created. And look at what's happening now. But, uh, it, but it's not just uh, Amsterdam is a volatile city because they invented <laughs> options and stocks. And they've had volatility for 300 years. So I'm going to illustrate my ideas using a picture that David G. Klein from the New York Times used to illustrate some of my columns. I've been writing columns about this. Uh, and so the first thing I think, the first idea is that we have to develop markets for this kind of risk. There has been no uh, international liquid market for real estate risk. And this is one thing that we've done uh, using the S&P Case-Shiller Home Price Index at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. We now have futures markets for 10 U.S. cities. Uh, and, there, and this is called backwardation. Uh, as of this month, they're predicting declines of between 10 and 15 percent for U.S. cities. But the idea is that creating markets like that might help prevent the kind of bubbles that we've seen recently. By, by bringing in a broader investment group, by allowing people to short the market. Uh, and there's more broad methods of, of uh, I'm going to go to my second idea, that uh, bubbles are caused by feedback. We have to damp the feedback. A famous, well, it's not so famous, it should be more. Oak Park, Illinois, in 1977, created a program, this is an invention, not mine, called Home Equity Assurance. And at that time, there was racial change, and there was fear of a negative spiral. Everyone thought that when low-income people come moving in, prices will fall, so that would be a self-fulfilling prophecy. So they created insurance on home prices. My proposal in the book is to create insurance nationally on home prices, but not in the Oak Park way, but based on indexes of home prices. So this is the S&P Case-Shiller three-tier index. We see that low-priced homes, the blue line, showed much greater drop. So we can focus in home equity insurance uh, policy on protecting against your particular price tier dropping. Uh, now, the tra tragedy that we have right now that's causing so much damage in the current crisis is millions of foreclosures. And it happens because people's home prices drop. And, uh, and when their price drops, they can't sell the house. Otherwise, they would just sell it uh, when they're in trouble. But they can't sell it because it's not as up to their mortgage. So we have to redesign, and uh, this is the uh, second major idea, mortgages to protect people against these kinds of risks. And it really means applying financial theory the way we do it uh, with uh, corporations. So I have what I call a continuous workout mortgage. It's my term. What it means is a workout is an adjustment of the mortgage principal and payments to protect the homeowner. So I want it to be index-based. If home prices fall, automatically your mortgage balance goes down. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, th I, uh, this is my last idea. The government ought to subsidize financial advice like we subsidize medical advice. It's recognized throughout the world that people have a right to medical advice. 
but they don't have any right to financial advice. So they're confronted all their lives with salespeople. Uh, and so we want to make, you want to have a family financial advisor even for low income people. I think that would be a, a revolution in our economy. Thank you.